for about four years. And um, it's pretty interesting. And I, what this presentation will be is kind of my journal review, so to speak, of the uh, kind of the peer-reviewed technical journals that have to do with this, this technology. So, um, go ahead and start. Is working. Yeah. Okay, the first thing I'm going to look at is what does hydrogen do in an engine? Uh, the first thing it does is it decreases emissions. Uh, the main emissions are carbon monoxide, nitric oxide, and unburnt hydrocarbons. Also, hydrogen increases the performance, and in, in this area, we need the fuel economy and the power. The first study I'm going to look at is, this study was actually somewhat negative about using the um, using onboard electrolysis. So I'm just kind of using this as an example of the disconnect between the, the quote, theoretical studies and the actual experiments in the car. In this study, they uh, did a computer simulation, and they found that 10% hydrogen and oxygen mix was had about the same effect as adding 20% hydrogen alone. Uh, this is where I think they ran into the problems and why they weren't really seeing the kind of performance that you know they should see is to simulate electrolysis gas. They mixed 97% air in a tank and then 2% hydrogen and 1% oxygen, and then they claimed that this would uh, you know simulate electrolysis gas. And so, basically, the reason they did that was they were worried about compressing it, and so they were trying to get the hydrogen below the flammability limit. And just starting off right there, that, you know, that they kind of defeat the purpose by being below the flammability limit. And so that was basically that study. Okay, so here's, uh, the electrolysis unit they were using for their assumptions were a unit that produced about 402 milliliters per minute of hydrogen at 169 watts. So this cell would be of MMW rating, which is milliliters per minute per watt, and about 2.37. Now, um, I built a small smack booster, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have. That one typically gets around four. So. They're, the cell that they're using for their assumption saying it doesn't work is, you know, quite a bit. It's not really representative to hydrogen boosters that we've been using. Uh, this is the next. This next study is an actual experimental study in cars, and it's done by a university in Turkey. And they used a basic single cell unit, and they were producing about 333 milliliters per minute at about 270 watts and that comes out to be only a, a MMW rating of only 1.23. But they tested this on four vehicles and they found that the emissions were reduced by about 50 percent and then this chart shows the four different vehicles that they used and the fuel economy increase that they were able to achieve. The next section I'm going to talk about is emissions. Uh, carbon monoxide is, is a product of incomplete combustion, and it typically, typically occurs in rich mixtures. Unburnt hydrocarbons are also a product of incomplete combustion. Uh, inside a cylinder, you have, uh, when the fuel is burning, you have the piston coming up, and then the walls of the cylinder are metal. And so when you have that fuel start to burn, especially if it burns slow, there's a lot of time for the heat to transfer out the cylinder walls, and that causes a loss. Another, and also there's a section of fuel around the cylinder that won't burn because of this effect. Also, there's a gap between the piston and the cylinder, and this is also an area where unburnt hydrocarbons can be created. Nitric oxide, now this is something that when you're uh, adding hydrogen, it can cause problems because since hydrogen burns faster and hotter, if you don't adjust the timing, you can have increased nitric oxide emissions. So this chart is from another paper where they show, uh, first this chart shows the emissions without hydrogen, 
and this is the air to fuel ratio and then the different emission curves on this on this axis is the uh, CO emissions and then uh, this is the hydrocarbon and this is the NOx and then the other chart is the how they're able to uh, clean out the mixture and also have uh, reduction in the in those different emissions so basically the reason why the carbon monoxide is reduced is because the um, hydrogen is able to burn a lot faster and so and you have a more complete burn of the hydrocarbon fuel so uh, that's what allows the CO to be reduced and for the same reasons uh, unburnt hydrocarbons are reduced uh, also if the engine is the timing is adjusted correctly and it's tuned for a hydrogen and gasoline mixture then you can also reduce the nitric oxide emissions so in summary uh, adding hydrogen to a fuel to a gasoline fuel or a diesel fuel can reduce the emissions uh, there seems to be a big disconnect between the uh, theoretical studies that have been done and the experimental so there needs to be a more detailed study using actual units and vehicles and not just using simulations and so then the, I'm I'm a student at the U of I and so I'm planning on doing a research project and I've applied for a, a grant through the Idaho Sustainability Initiative and we're going to put a hydrogen booster in a university vehicle and we're going to test and monitor the fuel mileage the uh, emissions and we're also going to try to put the vehicle on a dyno and get it tuned properly and this test vehicle will be a 1990 Chevy pickup truck so any questions well I guess the ultimate system it depends on how much money we're able to get for the grant but ideally I'd like to use a uh, one of the 101 plate buck voice units um, that's what I'd like to use we'll see how much money we can get for the, for the grant so. things about what we're doing, especially with the hydroxy technology is